completing some chapters. And 15 years ago, I started this crazy channel on a new website called YouTube. At that time, it was really just an alternative to MySpace. And I was a guitar teacher in Wiltshire and I just needed somewhere to put videos about my guitar lessons for students to come and find me. I had absolutely no idea of the significance it would have in my life. It was the 18th of November 2006 when I turned to my band at the time called The Black Hand and I said, dudes, I want to do YouTube. I want to focus on that. I think it's going to lead to good things. I was doing another project called Eternal Descent at the time with a friend of mine called Lexi Leon. And I just had a really good vibe about what YouTube would do. You know, that was 2,300 videos ago. 2,300 videos. Breaking it over 15 years. It's about three videos a week, every week. Sometimes that was the hardest thing you could ever imagine. Sometimes it was the most fun I've ever had in my life. Um, but was it worth it? So far, those uh, 2,300 videos have received over 296 million views, which absolutely, completely blows my mind. I find that staggering. If this isn't the best goddamn name for a boat ever, I don't know what is. <laughs> Assault weapon. I think it all sort of started with Ingve Malmsteen. I was doing some session work for EMI Records back when they existed. And they wanted a dude to uh, transcribe his Live in Leningrad DVD. Uh, so they sent me a couple of VHS tapes, which I destroyed with pause and rewind and play and pause and rewind and play. I did quite a lot of Ingve videos right at the beginning. Really enjoyed that. And I think it was a massive challenge to my technique. <laughs> And people sort of noticed and I did some orange videos and demonstrated tiny terrors and that kind of thing. And people really liked it when I was just a bit of an idiot. <laughs> so I suppose the first thing that YouTube really got me was a job with World Guitars in Hitchin, working for Jeff Pumfret, demonstrating really high-end PRS, um, just everything high-end, custom shot, crazy, crazy stuff. And I loved that job. It was so much fun with my little tiny camera that I turned up on the day with and Jeff went, what's that? And I went, yeah, it's the camera that I use for everything. And it was a little tiny real, you know, little tape camera. And um, I must have been shooting there for, I don't know, maybe five, six months. And then I got a phone call one day from a guy called Lee Anderton. And Lee said, hey, I've been watching your videos. I really enjoy them. I wonder if you'd like to come and shoot videos for me. And that kind of changed my life. I'll never forget the first videos I shot with Lee. In fact, I can pretty much remember shooting every single video because they were just ridiculously fun and stupid. But the very first video, I remember turning to Lee and saying, could you be the captain? And he was like, why? And I said, because we could pretend that we're in a ship. And at that instant, I think Lee <laughs> he kind of, he knew what kind of dude I was and we, we instantaneously became mates. <laughs> I hear a lawsuit coming. <laughs> so in a way, the first two things that YouTube got me were jobs. I got a job with well, guitars, I got a job with Andertons. At the same time, I picked up a job with Faith Acoustic Guitars. That was really cool. I basically found myself with something I hadn't had for most of my adult musician life, which was any kind of a living, really. Something I absolutely love about Malta is when nature takes over structures. <laughs> you can't stop nature, bro. Anderton's kind of spawned a whole load of different things for me, lots of new friendships. Um, I mean, having to go to Guildford, I was living in Wiltshire at the time, 
Um, I remember just going for pizza one day uh, at a pub called The Stoke. And I walked in and this big dude with an afro turned around and I went, hey man, can I order a pizza please? And he went, wait, are you Rob Chapman? And it was Rabia Massad. And so I suppose the second jobs, friends and things of significant importance that happened to me was meeting beer. It's so caliber. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Because um, Bia came with an entire band and we formed Dorje. And if, if there was ever like an indication that fate or I don't know, something like that might exist, it was walking into a pub to order a pizza and literally walking out with an entire band. Well, YouTube was absolutely instrumental in um, helping Dorje out because when we released some music videos, they did really well. It really pushed us on to do more and more and more with the band. I think it's definitely fair to say that if it wasn't for YouTube, the incredible hard work of Ben, Dave, Beer and myself would, would probably have taken a lot longer to come to any kind of fruition if it wasn't for things like the Catalyst music video. Dorje um, pushed by the global reach of YouTube. Wow, huge lizard. Uh, quickly became a touring band. And it was the touring that bought me my next set of Lynx, um, amazing exposure to incredible things in life. I became friends with a guy called Phil X, who plays guitar for Bon Jovi. And we did a couple of tours with Phil and, and the drills. Um, hired a dirty bus, had no, <laughs> had no bits working on it and stuff. But we, we did these really cool tours where we drove all around England a couple times, Dorje and the drills, and we just had it across venues. I lost my voice again and again, didn't have a clue what I was doing. Um, and, and some of the songs we were playing, I didn't even have lyrics for. I would just improvise on the night. And it gave me a very particular kind of live confidence that I'd never had before. About four, four and a half years into the YouTube journey, Things were kicking off with the band. Everything was going great and something amazing happened. I was working for an acoustic guitar company called Faith. And they offered me a signature guitar over a handshake at McDonald's. And obviously <laughs> I like leapt at the chance, couldn't believe it. You know the story, went back and told YouTube I'm making a guitar, but I love everything, what do you want to make? And Chapman Guitars was born. I didn't know it at the time, it was just a signature guitar for me, but it turned into a guitar, whoa. There is a dragonfly up here, the size of a bird, and I'm not even kidding you. If I can just find it again. Whoa, there it is. That is the biggest dragonfly I have ever seen in my life. Sorry, I got, I got sidetracked by an absolutely enormous dragonfly, literally the size of a bird. And I'm not, that's no kind of male bravado exaggeration. It was huge. So anyway, Chapman Guitars was born. Lee Anderton says, wow, these guitars are selling really good. How about, you know, you use Anderton's infrastructure, accounting, warehousing, and we'll kind of go 50-50. And I was like, great idea because I have no idea how to run a business. <laughs> so the next thing that YouTube gave me on a kind of digital platter was a guitar company. How unbelievable is that? Chapman Guitars happens, it's absolutely mind-blowing and I'm kind of pinching myself, you know. I said to my buddy Rabia, I think we should make you a signature guitar as well because you're an amazing player. And I'll never forget at the time he said, oh man, I don't think I'm worth it. You know, I'm nobody. I don't think anybody's going to want to buy a Rabia Massad guitar. And I said, they will, man. Trust me, they will. And you did. You bought hundreds of them. <laughs> so I'm glad I pushed because it was absolutely worth it. And some of... The best guitars I think we make are the Rabia Massad 
signature models. They've cut, they're kind of, it's like the Les Paul of Chapman guitars. It's a signature model, but now we even sell them to people who don't necessarily know who Rabia is. It's just a great design guitar. And that is down to obviously great factory, wonderful designers, but also Rabia has a great eye for design and a really good ear for what sounds right. Touring with the band brought some other really unexpected, incredible things. And I think the most unexpected and incredible thing from all of that was meeting my wife. Guys, I'm pretty sure I saw an angel over there. Over there? Yes. <laughs> Where? Over there. I think she's got a message for us. Well, she might have. She don't have no love. What about you? Do you want to do If we do. I don't want to do If we go, tomorrow, I'm going to do it. Ah, I'm not going to do it. What is that? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Fall away with story. She was the receptionist in the first hotel at the first night of the first Dorje and the Drills tour. And I was with my dad and I walked into the reception and under my breath, I was like, oh my God, she's really hot. I have to check out this amazing looking Russian chick. <laughs> Little did I know she wasn't Russian. She was from Malta. Something else that I think YouTube gave me the opportunity to do, which I absolutely love, almost more than playing the guitar or singing, is travel. I have been to Singapore, Brunei, Indonesia, China, Korea, uh, all over Asia, making things out of wood, making guitars. It's, um, it's been incredible. Like, I mean, I've had <laughs> ridiculous lows. For example, getting food poisoning in Indonesia, uh, I literally almost died. It was unbelievably bad and incredible highs, like taking my dad to China um, and doing these beautiful boat tours and having like mushroom buffets and just indescribable adventure with my dad is something that I'll never forget. And it was, it was like one of life's, one of my top 10 memories of all time. I mean, for sure, if it wasn't for YouTube, I would never have had the opportunity to travel like I have around Asia. Um, I even went to Australia, played three gigs, kind of uh, clinic things for Chapman Guitars, and uh, ended up making my daughter. I make girls upside down, I make boys the right way up. <laughs> uh, in November, on the anniversary of my 15 years of YouTube, there's going to be a series of really cool, ridiculous, fun, stupid things happening on YouTube. Competitions. <laughs> I don't want to tell you, but basically some crazy stuff is going down. And uh, I'm glad that a lot of you have, have been on this journey with me for the entire time. And I really, really appreciate it. I mean, it's just, it's been life changing. It really has. I mean, I was in my 30s when I started, 31 when I started this. Anyway, I'm back home. So... That's where I live. That's what YouTube got me after after 15 years. Take it easy and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Like, comment. See you soon. Chappers out.